Hey, hey, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about a very crucial topic, the 1949 coins, and why you should never spend them, especially the ones you see in this video. You're going to learn how to avoid scams and ensure you don't accidentally spend one of these valuable pieces of history. Stay tuned as we show you specific areas of these coins you need to be looking for to maximize values when you're selling them. You don't want to miss out on this video. Let's hop right into it. Before we get started, do you have any coins you're looking through? Leave a comment down below letting us know what you have. Alright, let's get started. So this first coin is a 1949 Washington Quarter. Alright, and this coin was also graded by a company called PCGS. Now you can have your coin not graded, however, getting your coin graded is going to increase the value of the coin quite significantly. To keep a long story short, there are times that you don't want to get your coin graded because you will lose money. And I do not want that to happen to you. You. The majority of the time that you find a coin, it's not going to be worth getting graded. Now there are certain situations where it is. This one might be that instance, but let's look into it. So this one got graded by PCGS at a 63. In the world of grading, that's a relatively low mint state grade. From 60 to 63 is considered the lower end. From 65 and higher is more of the higher end. Understand that every single point difference could be the difference of hundreds or thousands of dollars. So if you drop your coin, you may be damaging your coin hundreds or thousands of dollars worth. That brings up a very important part, is that knowing how to handle your coin is so, so important. If you're not handling it properly, you could damage the coin. Now we have a completely free coin and currency handbook down below that goes over coin handling, coin grading, coin values, how to sell your coin, and much more. Make sure to pick that up down below. But what makes this coin so rare and valuable? It's going to be that mint mark on the back bottom center of the coin. Now this is no ordinary mint mark. Okay, just to give you some brief history, a mint mark pretty much means where the coin was produced. If you have a D mint mark on your coin, and that means that your coin was produced at the Denver Mint. Now your coin can be made at the Denver Mint, the San Francisco Mint, the West Point Mint, or the Philadelphia Mint, depending on the type of coin you have and the year. In the coin community, we call this a repunched mint mark. So you're going to need to look very closely at your mint mark to see if you have one of these mint marks that was re-punched during the minting process. If that's the case, then you could have a coin that's pretty rare, especially if it grades highly. Now Denver in 1949 produced over 10 million of these Washington quarters. If you have one of these re-punched mint marks, then you're having something that's much more rare and valuable. So because this one got a lower grade, grade of a 63. It only sold for $89, but imagine coming across a roll of these that are brand new, that grade higher than a 63. That is where the real money is to be made. Let's go to the next coin. So this is a 1949 wheat cent coin. So wheat cent coins were made from 1909 to 1958. Now the first thing that you may notice on this coin is the crazy coloration happening. That is called toning. Now toning happens where the air will oxidize with the metals in the coin causing a reaction on the coin. Depending on the type of metals in the coin and how the coin is stored can change the color dramatically. Now there are bad actors out there that will see a video like ours, maybe they have a chemistry background, and they know what chemicals will react with which metals. What they'll do is they will artificially tone coins to increase their value. This is bad, especially if they're doing it deceptively where the buyer doesn't know what they're getting into. You'll also notice this has a D mint mark, standing for the Denver Mint. Once again, this has what we call a re-punched mint mark. So during the minting process, something happened where they re-punched this mint mark. Sometimes, the only way to really tell if you have a re-punched mint mark is by getting magnification. Now there's a bunch of ways to get magnification on your coins. If you're a bit older and you have some hard time seeing, what we recommend is picking up a USB microscope, one that you can plug into your computer. Now, please, you don't need to spend a lot of money on one of these USB microscopes. They're pretty cheap. We're going to leave a supply list down below if you want to click on that. Or if you want to get it even cheaper, you could probably go to like AliExpress and get it from overseas or something like that. But just know that you can pick one up for anywhere between 10 to like 50 bucks at most. If you want to go all out, there's ones that are over hundreds of dollars. That's fine too. If you do have better eyesight, you can get a magnification loop. There's pros and cons to both of them, but essentially you want to look for that re 
first mint mark with your USB microscope or your loop because that's going to enable you to see if you have one of these rare coins. This coin sold for 504 bucks. All right, here is a coin that sold for quite a bit of money. It's a 1949S, one cent wheat coin. This one got graded by PCGS at a mint state 67 plus. So here's a point that I really want to drive home to you guys. I get a lot of questions about how do I sell my coin? This is exactly how you do it. I'll keep it brief. But essentially, if you find out you have a rare coin, what we recommend is going to at least three different coin shops, getting their opinion. That way you know a decent valuation of your coin. Now, if you want to sell your coin quickly, sell it to a coin shop. They're going to most of the time give you a pretty decent deal. Understand that you're selling to someone who's going to resell the coin. So they need to make a profit as well. They need to keep their lights on. They have employees to pay. They have a building to pay for. So you're probably going to get 10 to 20 percent less money. Now, if you want to maximize how much money you're getting for your coin, you're going to want to sell it retail. What retail means is by selling it to someone who is collecting, right? If you sell it to a coin shop, they're pretty much doing wholesale and they're either going to be selling to another dealer for a smaller profit margin or they're going to sell full retail, which is to the public. So if you want to make the most money, you want to sell to the public. There's pros and cons to this, right? Because if you sell to the public, then you have to deal with the public, which can be quite tedious sometimes, depending on how you do it. So if you want to get rid of it quick, go to a coin shop. Just do not go to a pawn shop. If you want to maximize the value, depending on how much your coin is worth, we recommend either going on eBay, except they charge like a 13% fee. Plus, you got to worry about shipping it and insurance for shipping it. And if it potentially gets lost or damaged, so there's cons there. If you have a very high end item, what we recommend is possibly consigning it with someone like Heritage or Stax Bowers, Golden Auctions, someone like that would do. So that's pretty much it. That's how we would recommend selling your coin. This coin, for example, someone sold it on Heritage Auctions. So they had the coin, who knows, maybe they found it or they got it in change or maybe it was in the coin roll. That's how it got such a high grade. They decided to get it graded. You know, they paid 20, 30 bucks to get it graded and then they sold it for $720 on Heritage Auctions. That's great. You know, Heritage will take a small fee and then you'll get paid out after a month or two, depending on how quickly they pay out. $1,620 for this 1949 10 cent Roosevelt dime, graded by NGC at a mint state 68 with the full bands on the back. This thing looks like something from outer space to me. The colorations here are just wild. You know, have you ever seen a dime that looked like this? Pretty crazy. Not only does it have some pretty wild colorations, but it also has a moon shot high grade of a 68. When it comes to these old Roosevelt dimes, the grade is just so important. If this same coin would have graded at a 64 or a 65, it would have been worth significantly less money. Getting this high of a grade is really, really challenging. So once again, the coloration on this coin is caused from the toning, and the toning is caused by how it's stored. And that can either increase or decrease the value of the coin based upon the eye appeal, how nice it looks, whether a collector wants to pay money for a coin that looks like this or not, right? And if there's a few people that get into a bidding war over a specific coin, that will dramatically increase the value of the coin. Keep in mind that the value of a coin really boils down to what someone's willing to pay. That's it. If someone is not willing to pay the money for your coin, then your coin will not be worth money. If someone's willing to pay thousands of dollars for your coin, then your coin will be worth thousands of dollars. I know it seems pretty simple and pretty basic, but that's just kind of the reality. How many eyeballs are in front of your coin? So selling on an auction website like Heritage or selling on eBay, you have a lot of eyeballs looking at your coins. So that's going to have more people potentially bidding on your item. You also have the back of the coin where you have these full bands. The full bands are a bit harder to see on this one, but there are some horizontal bands on the torch and those are the highest point on the coin. They get worn down the quickest and they're the hardest to strike during the minting process. Having those full bands will increase the value of your coin. So pay attention to full bands as long as it's a mint state coin. This one sold for $1,620. $1,920. Eighty bucks for this 1949 one cent coin graded by NGC at a mint state 67 plus red. This coin is so so cool. So pay close attention. If you look on the cheekbone of Lincoln, there you're gonna see some marks. Now those happen during the minting process when the coins are being tossed around when they go through the process after they are struck. You gotta think they're making hundreds of millions of these coins and they have to do it very quickly.
quickly. However, a grading company like NGC and PCGS are going to recognize this is an as-made feature. This is completely normal. It's completely factory, and they will not designate the grade down too much for that. This one got graded by NGC at a mint state 67 plus, and it sold for 1,980 bucks. 2,040 bucks. This is a beautiful coin. It's a 1949, 25 cent Washington quarter graded by NGC at a mint state 68. That's two points away from the perfect grade of 70. You're going to see some crazy toning going on with this coin. There was more than likely a few bidders that really wanted this beauty in their collection. So they started paying more and more money for it until someone tapped out and said, I'm done, let the other guy win, and he walked away with it for 2,040 bucks. $4,800, that's a lot of money for this 1949. Five cent Jefferson nickel. Now this is a D-mint marked coin. That means this coin was struck at the Denver Mint. You can see that D-mint mark on the back right-hand side of the coin. Now that building on the back of the coin is actually actually Thomas Jefferson's house. His house was named Monticello, as you can see below the steps there, the word Monticello. Now above the word Monticello, you're going to see these full steps. Those full steps are very similar to the full bands, where they're the highest point on the coin, they get worn down the quickest, and they're the hardest to strike during the minting process. The really important part you need to know about the full steps and the full bands on the back of coins is, it only really matters if the coin is in mint state condition. If the grade is below 60 and you have the full steps, the grading companies like PCGS and NGC are not going to care too much about it and they're not going to designate it on their label. So you want to be looking for the full steps only on coins that are in really good condition because this example sold for $4,800. 9,000 buckaroos for this 1949 one cent coin graded by PCGS at a mint state 67 plus red with the CAC sticker. Now let me know down below, what would you do with an extra 9,000 bucks? Honestly, I'll keep this very, very simple. It comes down to a lot of different variations and factors, but the biggest one's gonna be condition, and this one kind of hits all of those check marks in my book. You have a 67 grade, which is really high. Then you have a grader that gave it a plus designation after that 67 grade. Then the person who had this coin sent it to a company called CAC, and CAC looked at the coin in the holder and said, this coin looks good. I'm going to give it a sticker. That sticker is accepted in the coin community and really increases the value of the coin. So because the coin's in really good condition, even though it's a Philadelphia issued coin, it's still going to be worth really good money because this one sold for $9,000. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to pick up our completely free coin and currency ebook down below and we'll see you in the next video.